Well met lords and ladies, Jacob Coburner speaking and a warm warm welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. I'm running a bit late, but here I am on Upper Stanhope Street. And I said the name of the street this time only because uh, I was thinking about Journey's End today. And of course, Dennis Stanhope and all those people. Which is why it's my minus teacher actually. But yeah, basically, I'm here uh, to think about because I've just been directing a piece written by somebody else. The new, the new writing module has just begun and I'm here now thinking all about the different influences that came those that informed that piece like, you know, King Lear, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares and of course my my personal capacity journey's end has nothing to do with the script itself but just because it's set all in one location. And that's all I can say on that matter actually simply because once again I'm not supposed to report on all that goes on during the rehearsals, you know? Uh, sir, but yeah. I, got, I mean, I'm supposed to report them to certain people, but you know, if there's any problems. But yeah, I know. For the most part, I've been kind of getting my footing. I'm not sure if I did, if I did too well today, just because, I don't know, I feel like I was just out of my, out of my game a little bit this time, because we just got the scripts and everything, I didn't have a chance to figure everything out. But yeah, now I've got an idea. Because basically for all the other bits, we chose our own extras and we worked on them beforehand. But for this one, because it was the first time we are getting stuff and we were reading things through, I made the mistake of booking, you know, two hours in order to do these kind of things. Which in a way did actually work out in the end. It's just that we had a bit more, a few more hurdles to go over. Okay, now for real, I'm not gonna say anything else because anything else will run into, I guess, Spoiler territory slash whatever. I don't. I know people aren't going to see this piece, but still, some people will know about it, and some people may in fact pick it up for the festival because there was lots of that actually. Festival talk. So, I said before that I thought today was supposed to be the day that all the writers were pitching their ideas for the festival. I was mistaken. That was apparently yesterday. I, I accept that is my fault. I didn't check Canvas properly. And Leisha, from the bottom of my heart, I'm very sorry. I will apologize to you directly later, but I haven't got there yet, so I might as well say it here too. But yeah, um, apparently all is not lost because people are still confused. Loads of us want to do a musical and I want to write a musical. So that just works out with it. And I, and I tend to write with a bunch of characters. Well, as all of you who actually watch my videos other than this series, no. I definitely love things with multiple characters in them. Somewhat to a detriment, occasionally. But yeah, point is, I have good practice with that setup, at the very least. So yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm hopeful, and I might just, you know, compile some video pitches and send them out, because clearly, if they can't even decide whether or not we're pitching stuff for ACB2, well, the writers are anyway, versus we're pitching stuff for the festival, then there is no hope. There is no hope for the department right now to have arranged everything and for it all to be working as smooth as they want it to be. Absolutely no chance. So, on that note, I guess, there is hope still. So yeah, I'll be combining two video pitches probably within the next week or so because I have I have the uh, the directing Viva to submit which basically involves me me um, recording myself and basically inputting all the all the audio into some powerpoints about answering a few questions and uh, and I also have oh, what else did I have oh wow my mind's gone blank now Wait, no, that's, that's the project for this week. I also have other directing stuff to get. I need to get used to this rhythm as well. But in the non-uni cycle of things, uh, I've been working on a, um, a scripted gacha review because now that I've got an editor to help, I can probably arrange that kind of thing. Something, something more akin to the Drama Donia review that I did a while ago. Maybe with a bit more ambition, because Ghosty is killing it right now, honestly. 
like I know that the only there's only one video that she's edited that I've posted but still it's uh if you see the next one she's already shown you what it looked like and I gave a few notes so it's going to be and everything, but it's looking way better and it's actually it's it's just something else I mean there's a few things that don't make sense because of it being made a year ago and some context that she's missing everything but I'm not too worried about that so I could go into like every single detail as to what actually was going on but again I don't want to overwhelm basically she even showed me the timeline thinking that it was uh it was a huge deal you know and how big the timeline was and uh, I was like well yeah that's what my videos normally look like actually to be honest maybe some of them a few less layers but still overall I can I can confidently say that that's what the that's you know some of the Muse and Girl episodes do have that many timelines if I didn't edit them the way I do now which is the more efficient way that I've got which is to really to, to do the angles separately and then you know I know so it's all compressed and on one on one part I used to not do that and you can't tell the difference but I can feel the difference basically so yeah um, but yeah, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the, so yeah, look forward to that next one. But yeah, now I'll do more of that. Uh, I might want to delve into some ideas of scripted reviews so that they can come across with a little bit more of a, a little bit more of like an expertise or like a sense of professionalism. Because actually, I just watched a um, uh, a live stream yesterday, which was done by uh, Think Media and. Uh, well, Sean, Sean Carnell, what was it? Is that his name? Yeah, Sean Carnell, Sean Carnell, can't remember exactly. Um, and, yeah, he basically, like, I subscribed to, like, his email service a while ago. And it's like he's doing, like, an end-of-year free masterclass. So I did that. I sent that to Aiden as well, because it was just a live stream link. And, uh, yeah, I'll be signing up for that class sometime soon. Like, his actual, like, more intensive course. One thing it went over actually there was reviewing specific products. So, and actually that's kind of, that's one idea that like really does do well on YouTube. And actually, now that I think about it, that's kind of what I was doing sometimes already. Like more so ASQ, which is the ask specific questions on the butter punch, you know, all the what ifs. But actually, the reviewing products is what I do on stream. It's what I do on, uh, Gotcha review and well, basically those two things. But yeah, actually that kind of makes sense. It tracks because those are products within the niche, actually, because the niche would be Gotcha content, and most Gotcha content nowadays is video-based. It's very tied to YouTube, so it makes perfect sense. So yeah, just thinking about those things. But yeah, so. That's why, and maybe the more structure I can make that review, the better that will do. That rhymes. So yeah, that's that's my hope right now. I can't really confirm either way, but still. Um, so yeah, I've, been, I've worked on a script for that, and uh, I honestly, I can I can say I'm getting a bit carried away with some bits. Like I'm pretty sure I'm on page five now, and I'm on minute three and a half. So I need to speed things up a little bit. Although this is, uh, the, the video that I am doing is one of those very, very popular gacha videos from two years ago that stayed as a promoting thing on the YouTube algorithm for at least one year after that. So I'm very curious, basically, as to how, well, I mean, how it does well, how it does, I think, all, this, all the usual stuff, but more so. It's kind of like Beauty is Pain, which was close to 9 million views, actually. Which is one is 7 million. So, yeah, just thinking. Because there's some, there's some things that really did well back in the day. And now, many movies have sort of fizzled out a little bit. And they're kind of on the rise again. But this was a much simpler time. And I'm wondering, like, if, there's, there's, if it's all just because it was a simpler time and no one knew what they were doing. And people now look for so much more quality or they just left because the pressure is too much in the in the community or if you know they're just growing up 
But the other, the other option, of course, is that there's something nowadays that lots of mini movers and individual things are missing, particularly, or if it was just the culture of the time. And I genuinely don't know the answer to this. So, yeah, I just kind of go into these things. I wonder as well how people actually remember this title if I say it's in the actual video. I'm not going to say what it is now. But yeah, that's what I've been doing somewhat on the YouTube side of things. That was kind of like a yesterday thing. I might try and finish it off today, but actually I've got to finish off the Viva first. Really do that. But yeah, the other question, I, well, the other thing I have been doing in terms of YouTube stuff is working on the Mutant Girl episodes. Because yeah, we are in like mid-November now, which means that we really, I really need to pick up the pace in terms of, you know, distributing scenes, you know, making sure I know who's stressed and who isn't, what I can do versus what other people can do. Because yeah, like I know for example that I'm going to be doing the next, the opening, the opening uh, shots of the next episode because it ties on for the last one, which is what I'm doing too. And that was a composite shot. So I need to process that myself. But yeah, I'll be, beyond that, there's not too much I can I can speculate right now because I need to really think about this. And also, uh, I don't know, do do the I'll do one scene from Fallen Angels because I'm the one who's now left. I'm just waiting for one edited scene from Monet, and Ainsworth has been wanted to see from me. So. Both of us are probably going to be able to post our things fairly soon. Like, I want to say, like, today's the 17th, so it would have been kind of nice to have it out today. But then again, that's like a huge mad panic thing. I might as well structure myself a little bit more, you know? Uh, obviously, season two has not had, like, a, 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 the 17th release ever, I don't think. Well, I don't know. I'll have to check. Not really sure. But yeah, point is... I know, it's, it's going to come soon, basically, and I really, I'm really looking forward to it because, again, I want to finish. There's two more episodes after that to end season two, and then I can really pro properly take a break and look back and see what other projects I've been neglecting. That's the thing about the Mutant Girl, actually. People often wonder what, you know, what happened to Puppy Love, what happened to Siren Story, what happened to Enceladus, what happened to... Alien Baroness, all those things that I said, maybe even didn't get past the writing phase with two of those, and actually like cast the other ones and stuff. Well, first of all, I can say Siren Story's got a plan, um, because basically because uh, I'm actually using that as one of my festival ideas. Because people want to do a musical, I want to write a musical. It just fits, uh, and I have a couple of songs we've done already. So yeah, then that, that's. As for Puppy Love, who knows, because basically I have to talk to, I mean, to have a social conversation with Emma again, because apparently now Aiden's taken the last scene from her, which means that she's done physically nothing for this ne for the next episode. So will it be on her channel? Will we even like share this, this, se this series like we, we intended to, or will it just become, will it just become something on my on my channel and just have one specific place for all of them. I don't want that to happen because like the idea was to promote her and get her to bounce back, but apparently she's close to being Twitch affiliated. So actually she seems to be doing pretty well on her own in terms of like other stuff and much less of a pressure to produce things. Because I remember back in the day she said that the reason Timmy the Bad Boy came out so quickly from from uh, like from the other parts was because she felt the pressure to if she were if she did release a video on any particular day then she was going to lose the following that she had and lose that momentum and i can sort of see why like that that mentality makes perfect sense to me it's something i felt sometimes too when i when i tried to post stuff every day but obviously she felt it on a much grander level because, you know, for a food to, to blow up that quickly and then you'd be writing that, you'd be trying to maintain that success rate for as long as you possibly can without really knowing what got you there in the first place. 
that's a lot that takes a toll but yeah either way <laughs> point is that i wanted her to bounce back from all that time that she spent like maintaining everything and uh but i guess now she's doing that without all that all that pressure and maybe on a much more comfortable level because she used to stream on youtube before like you know this is man i'm introvert over here <laughs> and uh <laughs> yeah so but uh, but yeah she still was really confident in doing those things and uh really yeah uh, what am i saying now <laughs> and i had a proper engagement with, with with all the people like that i mean this is this is someone who was doing like you know 20 uh, tw uh, no 20 views per stream usually that's not too much like again considering like her level but at the time but either way it was manageable that's the point minus when famous gamer showed up every now and then and tried to really pressure her into a collab she didn't want but that's a whole other story that i don't want to really get into right now so yeah either way um yeah point is that's that i sort of have to really talk to her about what she actually wants to do whether she wants to carry on with her youtube stuff whether she wants to just help pull her with his stuff and or and then continue her twitch like what her plan is now because honestly it's series started off like like as a collab to promote my channel initially you know back when she had that immense following amazon based on gay love stories well it wasn't designed that it was just, actually it was designed as my response to him bad boy to see how i could do the idea properly for gay love story but then it became more of a marketing thing later down the line and uh and then basically uh oh yeah then then basically after after a while you know we didn't actually coordinate who was doing what who was editing what things because at the time she was on editing music entirely and then just disappeared and uh yeah that was the same year so you checked into a mental institution so that was that's kind of was probably at the build-up to that it was a few months down the line but yeah same idea and yeah i really don't i really don't know because on one has not because that because then afterwards once she comes back then that was my point my idea was to use the series to promote her and and then and then you know use the last Re re semblance of that hype and go ahead and just direct it back to her because what happened to her channel wasn't fair and I wanted to do the right thing there well, I thought it was the right thing because you know some people also said oh yeah well she posted explicit stuff so therefore you know she knew what was happening she deserved it blah 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 I don't know I've heard that from people but at the same time she that wasn't all she did she grew that channel from scratch and was really proud of it. And uh, yeah, I just think that it was just taken down way too quickly. But yeah, either way, point was that's what it became later. But now, who knows? I need to question whether or not I just do what I did before and just make the series I wanted to do in response to a series that now no longer exists. <sighs> I am going to make it, by the way. I owe it to the people that signed up for that, the ones that wanted to be in something that Emma was involved in. She's still the voice of Nathan, by the way, so that, doesn't, that hasn't changed. And, and also, you know, and also like sign up, they up auditions have stayed around since then and we're really going to be a part of what would have been one of the another one of the first voice actor gacha videos and the series because yes, it was 2019 when we started casting it so once again could have been at the forefront not that i've really been particularly oh look tox ftv i didn't know this thing anyway not that i've been particularly successful at doing that in the past which is also a topic of conversation that I came up with recently. Like, I wonder now if, because um, I've mentioned this before, but should I be 
doing, um, should I be moving a few bits of the content that I do to other channels? Like Gacha Review, I know that I'm working on that stuff now with Ghosty, but I might actually migrate that series over to a channel just on its own. Or, you know, put all the Gacha content that I do on somewhere else and leave the Jacob Butter channel to the reviews and to, well, to the music guy as well. That's the thing. For a series that goes on like that, I wonder if I should really do, I should move that. Maybe if I start remaking it, so it might go on to a second place. But then again, we were supposed to be on the anniversaries now. So I'm really confused, basically. I don't know anything of what might happen. <sighs> yeah. Who knows? Yeah, I th I, I've got nothing to say about that. Oh, and I'm almost running out of time. But yeah, I think that's that's everything. So I'm just wondering that now, because I might do that in the future, but I might not. It depends. I'll probably I'll leave a community channel post because obviously, you know, people don't all watch these videos. There's different interpretations, and now that I've learned some stuff that actually works, I can indulge that more. The butter bunch, I can, you know, I can just you know think about stuff for the main channel. I can make things work now a little bit better than they were before and just see where that takes me but yeah either way I have no intention of quitting and whatever happens happens but yeah we'll see what ha we'll see how the responses go and then maybe if they'll attract a new audience in the future but first Viva you know uni stuff directing all that good stuff so yeah now I'm gonna go and do all those things but also eat because I haven't eaten yet because I've been directing and then I left my phone back so at home so I had to go and collect it but yeah either way please leave a like or dislike because your opinion matters and subscribe to us already oh wait no dislikes anymore YouTube of course I found out that's finally just a UK thing right now they're testing it they're testing the grounds not applying it everywhere so if you can leave a dislike because your opinion matters but only I will see it over in the UK so yeah get some NordVPN people and on that note until next time Farewell.